What is light? Since childhood, our view of light seems very obvious. At that time, our world is bright or dark. But we will explain further that light is a more complex phenomenon and should be examined on a microscopic scale. Light reaches our planet after a high-speed journey of 149 million kilometers, 93 million miles away from the sun. The rays travel at a speed of 186,000 miles, 300,000 kilometers per second. Therefore, the light you see at any moment is from 8 minutes ago when it started its journey from the sun. But why and how does light make such a journey? As you probably know, the sun is a fiery sphere that radiates energy in all directions. Energy production in the sun is done using the process of nuclear fusion. The light we see is the part of sun's energy that our eyes can detect. When light travels between two places, from the sun to the earth or from a flashlight to the sidewalk, energy also flows between the two points. Energy moves in the form of the waves, similar to sea waves, about 100 million times smaller. These waves are a vibrating pattern of electric and magnetic waves that we call electromagnetic energy. In fact, these two electric and magnetic waves are perpendicular to each other and are transmitted at the speed of light. Wave or practice. For many years, scientists were faced with the question of whether light is really a wave. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton was one of the first people to carefully study the details of light. He was the first to consider light as a stream of particles or simply as particles. But his great rival, the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, firmly believed that light consists of waves. Newton's claims that light is a particle led to debates that are still being discussed today. In some cases, light behaves exactly like a wave. For example, rays can be reflected from a mirror. Exactly the same as the sea waves hit the rock in return. From another angle, light behaves much like a stream of bullet fired from a gun at high speed. During the 20th century, physicists believe that light can be a particle and a wave at the same time. This theory is known as wave-particle duality. A more accurate answer to this problem is perhaps more philosophical and psychological instead of physical. Our perception of the world is interpreted based on how our eyes and brain work. Sometimes light appears to behave as a wave. Sometimes it seems that light is a stream of particles. While at first glance, it seems that both of these concepts cannot be maintained. It can be pretended that light has almost both of these behaviors with a certain proportion and in certain conditions. To better understand light, it can be considered as a form of energy. One day someone might come up with a better way to describe and explain it that makes perfect sense in all circumstances. Therefore, we can finally say that light can be interpreted both as a wave and as a particle. Light waves, consider light as waves in the section, are examined in four different modes. These behaviors are known as reflection, refraction, diffraction, and uh, interference. In the following, we will explain each of these situations separately. Reflection. The most obvious thing that can be said about light is that it reflects when it hits different objects. Reflection is the only reason we can see the objects around us. This is because light is reflected into our eye from the sun or from something like an electric light bulb. In fact, if you remove the source or prevent its light from reaching your eyes, these objects will disappear. Obviously, in this case, the objects do not disappear, but you can no longer see them. Reflection can be done in two completely different ways. If you expose a smooth, highly polished surface to a narrow beam of light, you will see that the beam is completely reflected. This means that if you shine the rays of the flashlight or laser on a mirror, the set rays will be reflected. 
Most polished and smooth objects have a high ability to reflect light rays. On the other hand, when you shine a light on a rough surface, you will see that its rays are scattered. This type of reflection is called scattering, and it is the reason we see most objects around us. In fact, if an object observes the entire beam, we will no longer be able to see it. If you are able to see your face completely in a substrate such as water or a mirror, then the reflection is a complete reflection. But if you can't see your face, it is a broadcast reflection. For example, polish a teaspoon and you will see yourself clearly in it. But if the spoon is dirty, the particles and dust will scatter the light in all directions and your face will disappear. Brake light waves travel in straight lines in empty space, vacuum. But when the light travels through other materials, it exhibits even more interesting behaviors. The behavior is more noticeable when the light moves from one environment to another. Have you noticed how much more difficult it is to walk when you're walking on water? Meanwhile, running a beach can be done at a high speed. No matter how hard you try, walking in water is always more difficult. Liquid is denser than air, so your motion must displace the denser fluid. The same thing happens with light. In fact, the speed of light movement in water, glass, plastic, or any denser material is slower than air. This difference is the speed of light in different environments leads to its failure. Reflection of light is surprisingly practical. If you wear glasses, you probably know that the lenses are made of curved pieces of glass or plastic that deflect light from the objects you are looking at. Bending light makes it appear as if the light is coming from closer or further away, depending on the type of lenses you have. Digital cameras, telescopes, camcorders, night vision goggles, and many other optical instruments work the same way. Although it feels like light normally travels in a straight line, you can bend its rays by hitting thin glass or plastic conduits called fiber optics. Diffraction, as mentioned above, waves like bodies transmit energy. For example, if a ball hits you, its energy will be transferred to you. But if there is an obstacle between you and the ball, this energy will not be transferred. But the question arises why the voice of the person behind the wall can be heard, but its image cannot be seen. This question arises because both light and the sound are considered as waves. The answer lies in the bending of the waves. In fact, the sound wave can bend around the tree and pass through it. This is despite the fact that light doesn't have this capability. The amount of bending of wave depends on the roughness of the surface and its wavelength. For example, the wavelength and range of light is such that it can pass through materials such as water or air. This is why you can see the image of an object in the air. Bending of the wave at the corners and generally around the diffractive material is called. This phenomenon is different from interference and uh, we will explain it further. Interference, if you stand near a steel pond and tap the surface of the water with your finger, you will see waves forming and spreading in a circle. Now, if you hit two different points of the surface at the same time, you will see that two waves with different centers are created and grow gradually. But these waves have interfered with each other at certain points, which lead to the creation of a certain patterns. If two light sources also produce waves that propagate together, they will interfere with each other at certain points. At some points, the two peaks of wave meet and lead to a larger amplitude. On the other hand, at some points, two positive and negative peaks meet and cancel each other. Therefore, in general, a pattern is created where the waves reinforce each other in some places and cancel each other out in other places.
Interference results in the color patterns produced in soap bubbles or the pattern produced in rainbows. Of course, such a pattern can also be created by placing a lens in front of the light. What happens is the interference of two light waves that pass through the lens. It is interesting to know that Isaac imagined a light as a particle. He considered light as a stream of particles, which changes the speed of the particles as their environment changes and uh, leads to their breaking. But the interference pattern created in a Dushkov experiment contradicts the theory of light being a particle. In the two-slit test, as shown in the figure below, a light beam is passed through two slits. As a result, what is observed is similar to the wave pattern created by the interference of two waves. This test, which is known as Young's bifurcation test, was performed for the first time in 1801 by Thomas Young. The results of this experiment showed that light cannot be imagined as an absolute particle. Source of light in order to explain the origin of light rays, you must first be similar with the concept of energy. As you know, energy is not a quantity that arises or disappears from somewhere. In fact, energy is only transferred or its form changes. This concept is called the law of conservation of energy. One can have such an idea about light. Energy can be taken from bearing and converted into electricity. But how is light created? Light is created inside an atom when it is excited. In fact, electrons are moving in orbits around the atom. This circuit represents a level of energy. If energy is given to the atom in question, the electrons are excited and transferred to a higher energy orbit. In this state, the atom becomes more unstable than before. Hence, atoms have a strong tendency to return to their more stable state. As a result, the electrons lose their energy and return to the initial state or loyal orbit. The circuit change leads at the release of energy that is released in the form of photons. Light rays are actually a stream of massless photons. A special thanks to patrons and members for their support. And if you'd like your name added to every Space Facts video, explore the links below. Best wishes and see you next time.